Okay, uh, we're going to talk about cosmology. It's 10 lectures. Uh, this is uh, lecture 21. And uh, in the book, it will be chapter 8. Uh, so, GR framework for cosmology. And uh, so, the first section, we talk about the observation aspect of cosmology, uh, the overall picture. And then we're going to talk about the fact that the night like sky is dark, uh, so the universe cannot be static infinite. Then we're going to talk about the expanding universe and its age and uh, its mass energy content, uh, so-called baryonic matter and dark matter. Okay, uh, This is going to be a longish lecture, but uh, mostly descriptive, so it's, it's, uh, so the length really doesn't, shouldn't be too demanding. So, first, we're going to talk GR and cosmology. And uh, we, cosmology is the study of the whole universe as a physical system. And uh, we ask questions like what is the matter energy content? How is the content organized? What is its history? How will it evolve in the future? Okay, since this type of questions. And uh, on the present cosmic scale, the only relevant interaction among galaxies is gravitation. So all galaxies are accelerating under their mutual gravity. Thus the study of cosmology depends crucially on our understanding of gravity. And the parameter that determines uh, whether Einstein theory is required or a Newtonian description will be suffice is this ratio of the Newton's constant multiply the mass of the system divided by the distance scale and the c squared. Okay, I call it the psi. So, so for typical uh, stars, uh, like so, a solar system, and uh, the GI effects are small because this parameter for, uh, for the solar system is on the order of one part in a million. Okay. So GI effects are typically very tiny. And on the hand, for black holes, it's uh, the distance scale is so small, comparable to the Schwarzschild radius. So the black hole, the parameter is the order can be order one. So therefore, you absolutely need GR to, to describe black holes. And same with cosmology, the total mass is uh, is density times the volume uh, are cubed. So even though the density can be very low. The distance is so large that so therefore the volume is so large, you still get uh, this parameter can be order of one. Okay, so describe events on cosmic scale. We must use uh, general relativity. Modern cosmology start with Einstein's 1917 paper. Remember his GR paper was published in 1916 and uh, which titled the cosmological consideration in the general theory of relativity showing that gi can describe an uh, unbounded homogeneous mass distribution so this really ever since then all the uh, cosmological study are, are carried out in the frame with gr first we're going to talk about something called Ober's paradox <coughs> Because uh, less than a hundred years ago, it was commonly held that the universe was static, infinite in age, and infinite extent. That's you know everyone believed, uh, and uh, uh, but actually, uh, already been pointed out uh, that uh, this the cosmic picture was contradicted by observation. What's observation? The night the night sky is dark. Uh, the intrinsic brightness of a star, which is called, we call it luminosity, is given defined to be the emitting power, which means the energy per unit time, the amount of energy emitted per unit time, so we call it luminosity. The observed brightness at the distant r of such a star is given by the amount of energy we see per unit time per unit area. Okay, since the rate of energy per unit time that's that's power, so that's the luminosity. So, so this is really the flux 
which is, is luminosity per unit area. Area, of course, is, is uh, uh, presumed that emission is isotropic, so it's just the area of sphere with radius r. So the total brightness uh, of the night, night sky is the sum of the received flux from all the stars in the universe, right? Because each one emits this amount, and you have to add up all the contribution from all the stars. So, uh, in a static infinite universe, stars have, let's say, assume have unif uniform luminosity, and the number density uh, n is uniform, then the, we add up by integrate over all space, okay? And uh, uh, so that's the, uh, the number of star per unit volume times what each star uh, contributes in flux times the uh, integral over the volume. Okay. The volume can be taken as spherical symmetric volume elements, which means the spherical surface times the thickness of the, of the sphere, so 4 pi r squared dr. Now, the 4 pi r squared in, in dv just cancels the 4 pi r squared in the flux, so therefore, you take the constant luminosity, constant, and you pull out the integral, you have zero to infinity uh, for the infinite universe, r, dr, so that's r, which is uh, infinite. So we, we, what it seems to imply, we get infinite brightness. Okay. Now, that's an overcome because uh, star have uh, finer angular sizes, and the above calculation assumes no obstruction by foreground stars. So really, we, instead of infinity, we should really up to the to the the distance to the surface of the uh, of the of, of the star. So therefore, this instead of infinite, uh, this really the brightness should be the the surface brightness of stars. So it was uh, this calculation really should be. Like the, the, the bright, the total brightness is like every direction you look is like looking direct into the sun. Well, again, we said perhaps this is not right because there are maybe there are interstellar dust that diminish brightness of the light traveling along with because of their absorption by the dust. But that doesn't really help because over time the foreground stars and the dust particles will be heated up and radiate as much as they absorb. So therefore, uh, in the end, uh, the star, the dust the, the, will not diminish the, the brightness. So it seems that the, the, a dark night suggests that our universe is not infinite and not static. Okay. So before we talk about, let's give you some notion of the cosmic distance scale we're, we're talking about. Okay. Uh, people long believe our universe is static and partly because the then known universe essentially consists of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And the observed stellar motion in the Milky Way is relatively slow. So that's why it's thought it static. And uh, okay. also the, this universe is just our Milky Way. The common use astronaut distance unit is called parsec. Uh, define a distance of a star having a parallax of one arc second for a baseline of uh, AU, which stands for astronomical unit, which is the average distance between Earth and the Sun. And uh, so it was here is the uh, uh, distance, uh, and here is the Sun, and uh, the Earth going around, so the radius is uh, one AU. So if you look at the star from this angle, then half years later to the other side, and the, the star will have a different uh, inclination. And uh, so this defines, so this is the, the, the parallax uh, is the, to find the semi-angle of inclination between two slight sight lines of a star as observed from Earth on opposite side of the sun. Okay, so, so we define this system to be parsec if the uh, parallax is one arc second, and for a baseline of one uh, uh, AU. Uh, 
and then if you work out to be to a distance which you more, may be more familiar to physics students is one process about 3.26 light years uh, parsec is the is the characteristic distance between stars okay for example this is from the sun to the nearest star uh, stellar neighbor is about 1.2 uh, parsec and our Milky Way is a galaxy containing something like a hundred billion stars in the form of disk, and uh, uh, the it's about thirty kiloparsec across and about two kiloparsec thickness. Okay, a bulge of so this gives a sense what a, a parsec, a kiloparsec, this, this kind of cosmic distance we're talking about. Galaxies are distributed in sort of in a hierarchical structure. Okay. The Milky Way and about 30 other galaxies form what we call a lo our local group, spanning distance about one megaparsec, which is about a million. <coughs> and the largest member, the Andromeda galaxy, is about 0.7 megaparsec away from, from us. And our local group is part of the Virgo cluster, which is which is about the size of five megaparsec, uh, comprised of about 2,000 galaxies, which in turn is part of our local supercluster, having a dimension of 50 megaparsec. Uh, there are other superclusters and, and voids of comparable size, but if on distance scale greater than 300 megaparsec, the universe appears to our observation to, uh, to be homogeneous. It's, it's, So we stop here on the first part of lecture 21.